on Autumn, you know, I, I've helped out my, my relatives, you know, but Akama Autumn, you know, the river, you know, um, I've known Lori for some time since she was part of a campaign to be a incinerator in the community. So, and also with my partner, who's in the, in the her, you know, to stop this freeway, not just for herself, but her, her son and, you know, everybody else in the future to come. But as far as, like, what I've heard here, like, sharing this with other people at Occupy, I've always heard arguments like, well, you know, why don't you just go to your tribe and, you know, they'll, they'll fix it for you. Or pretty much like, we, we need a freeway. You know, it's good for the economy. Like, we want jobs, you know, like, that's why we're occupying. <laughs> so I wanted to, you know, I heard that sadly here. And, and I know a lot has changed, you know, I, I want to throw it out there. And I'm glad that like, we're at this place that we can talk about this, because. I remember how angry you were the first day I met you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Holly has seen me change, uh, or you know, we've all changed, you know, sharing it and talking. So my point being, though, know, is like, with everything that's going on, like community members, they did ask that question at the end when you know we were asked, you know, well, what our next step? What happens if we get no bill? You see the community, that's February 7th. And that's what we're mobilizing in is to get everybody to go out and vote, no bill. And then from there, it's a done deal. Like we don't have to deal with this shit on the reservation, but the state's gonna keep trying to find their ways to make this happen and they're gonna say, Oh, well we're just gonna blow up your state site. You know, and as I think a lot of us know, like Pockets of resistance are it's going on all around the world to protect native land. You know, if it's up in Flagstaff with Snowball, if it's up with uh, Mount Graham, if it's a Black Mesa, like we're not alone. You know, but of course within the community, it's always hard to like share that and just be like, you know, hey, there's other native people that are going through this, and there's ways to fight this. So in the meanwhile, if we're able to build that solidarity with, you know, non-Autumn people, you know, anybody really to show a force to these, these people that are, you know, to talk about MAG. I mean, the people who sit on MAG, besides the city reps, uh, execs from SWIFT corporations, you know, the truckers that are on it, construction uh, people, like every component of like who wants, is gonna profit off this freeway sits on the board that's gonna make the freeway. So like, those are like clear points I think people here probably would definitely would want to uh, explore and see how we can challenge that. And uh, this, you know, by telling relatives and telling el you know, elders, you know, these things in the community, it's like, Bill of you know, that's what we say, white people, Bill of want to help, you know, just to show, like, just that solidarity that really gives that hope that, all right, all right we just got to take care of what we got to do, and even it's going to be a big struggle, I mean, look at the peaks, for example, it's still going on 20, 30 years, but they haven't expanded, they haven't made the big snow, so, like, it can't be stopped, let alone, you know, money, I mean, what's going on with the economy, like, who knows, like, what if they just say, fuck it, we don't want to make this money? Or maybe we're able to stop in 5, 10, 20 years, you know. There's a lot of possibilities. And this whole push for the vote, it is, they undermine the process. They're making the community vote without an EIS. You know, that's, I mean, like it's a tumor, as, as Drew put it. You know, you're going to just accept it and go move forward. So, I mean, definitely the, the community, you know, this being and not, not a enrolled member, but as an author, just to hear that and see that. And also always, you know, showing, hey, you know, like Drew, Jezebel and Matt and other friends that have met people in the community, they're, they're happy that we have these packets that were researched by people on the outside. You know, they're happy that, you know, we were helped with banners, they're happy that we're even happy. And we told everybody, hey, we're going to Occupy Phoenix to share what's going on. Oh, awesome. You know, keep on doing it. So, like, that's what I wanted to put out there is that, you know, um, a lot has changed here, and that's why we returned. And definitely, like, being at Max right down the street, and I being at this capitalism is everywhere, you know, clearly in our community, even though some you know, folks don't want to address it as that, that's what it is, you know, and that's colonization. And if we're able to just go in there and for that day, which we can, you know, talk about that now, what does that look like from the comments? Like, we can be like, hey, we're on the record, we're, we're saying no, we stand in solidarity, but also too, like, I like to hear y'all's reasons to, to be here with us so we can find out, like, what are your reasons? Why are you against this freeway? Or why are you at the very least open to this conversation? You know, I know it's native people and you know my experience here has always been very rigid but like it seems like we're all in a, a place to explore that and articulate something that's going to like scare the fuck out of these execs on their board just to like hear non-native people stand in solidarity with natives plus like fuck your freeways like that would really you know fuck with their head and in their process so that's what i want to say yeah basically like with what they have said, we a main point of organizing to come here was to ask for people's support at the upcoming meetings. And I brought some flyers with the dates of them on there. And we have a lot of online resources, and there's been zines in the community. 
for a lot of background information. And I guess we talked about it at the winter assembly, but it's really simple what we need and it's easy to get there. It's just people from all of your, you know, all the aspects of your life from the occupation, reoccupation down here to your personal lives, incorporating the messages of other people's struggles. That's part of decolonization, like confronting patriarchy, confronting destruction of the earth, working to undo what's been done by capitalism, and because it's still happening. So for the two meetings coming up, the one is Wednesday, we are putting it out there that we would like to have a rally before it. That's a really, that's a like direct call for support. Um, and what that looks like is bring signs, bring yourself, bring your voice, and just go to the Meg building at 3 p.m. and literally just stand in solidarity because other people are gonna go in and deliver a message. Uh, during the public comment period, which is another thing that we're asking people to do. Um, but just so that it's really clear, all you have to do is go to the MAG building. Just go and like feel good about being a part of a movement and feel good about being part of resistance. And the more people that we bring together, it'll, it will feel good. And it should feel good when we're building healthy communities and confronting this shit. The other step to that is going up to the meeting, which starts at four. If you want to actually get on and speak about, you know, where your heart is at with it, rather, you know, you might not know a lot about decolonizing. I brought um, some information on that as well. But, you know, if you're like, I want to see healthy development. I, I don't like where it's at. I want to see a change. If you just, you get like three minutes to talk, you gotta go up before it starts, fill out a card with your info, drop it to them, and then you get to go up on the mic. And that's like, these meetings are not like, they're like hella businessy, and people, normal people do not go there. Um, I went a couple months ago, I was like the only person not wearing a fucking suit. Like, <laughs> I was just there to, you know, deliver a message. I read a letter from the 80s from a Greek governor saying, where's the EIS statement at? And for me, I'm gonna go back and say, all right, you're trying to have them vote on this. Um, you said that in the beginning of the year that was gonna come out. We have it on tape. It hasn't come out yet. So for me, I, I wanna go back there and say that. And then if other people can do that as well you know go sign the card and just go up there and take up space like reclaim that space it's a public meeting and seriously like just doing that is gonna freak them out it's gonna make them un, you know it's gonna make them uneasy and also like there is a bit of legitimacy to going and showing like a community presence these types of meetings used to actually be where people gave their input on where they felt. It's very common to come together as a community. It's just been taken over. So what we want to do is, you know, take it back and decolonize and confront these things. So just to give another fa fact of like what happened before, um, you probably will see police there because they know people are organizing. Um, last time it was me and another person and our kid and there was like cops there before coming and looking at us we had a banner that just said support d6 and people were like all over it um we went upstairs to the meeting before it started the only people up there were plain clothed cops um you know we said our piece we left we go downstairs there's like eight or nine cops um you can see pictures on the no South Mountain Freeway page. It's noahsouthmountain.wordpress.com. Um, but don't let that, you know, intimidate you. And if you are scared, it's okay because cops fuck people over and it's natural to feel uncomfortable. But as a group, we can go in and, you know, combat that and reclaim that space and make it what it's used for. And 
as far as I see it, like as many people as want to, they want to talk, we'll hold that space and be like, yo, this is where we're talking. And if we can get like 50 people to just keep talking, that would be great. Just, just do it and make them hear it. And if we want to like all talk at once really loud, that would be creative too. You know, bring banners and signs inside, just re reclaim that space. And that'll just be practice for the meeting that comes up the next week. <laughs> Seriously, you know, like, go and be a part of the, some resistance and take your message there. And it's good to, like, come together and then go tell other people. Utilize your media, your networks, you know, your churches, your lunch hall, wherever you're at. Just spread the word, you know, get more people and tell them how it felt. And then we'll just go back and we're going to see what happens at these meetings. The vote is happening in the beginning of February, so after we know, after we build this up a bit, we can get even more strategic. But we got to we got to build it up and make it so our solidarity with the autumn who are resisting this is strong, so that you know we get more people in it and we just keep doing it and just making this place healthier. And it'll be amazing if we can do that. I'm I'm really into seeing more people there. Um, it was pretty overwhelming to be like alone in the meeting and I know like Alex and Lori and some other folks did it too and it's it's intimidating. So I know I know if we can reverse that and throw that out on them to intimidate them and be like, yo, this is what's up. Where is it at? Where's the EIS? What are we gonna do? It's just that's like the most easiest way to do this, to clear call for support. Please, 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 please just come. Come to the meeting once. And the next week, yeah. So it's January 18th. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah, a couple questions. Uh, how close to the, to Snake Town is this, um, Up there, of the proposed freeway, so it's probably I estimate 15, 18 miles. This freeway, the east end of the freeway is going to be very close. In fact, uh, Snake Town's along the 10, right. and um, you know. Yeah, sort of for. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Snake Town is one of the the, the biggest uh, Hohokam um, archaeological sites they've ever found. So far. So far, right. Yes. Um, I think upwards to 800 people were living there at one time. Uh, it's, yeah, I estimated about Yeah, eight. it's this huge, you can't, it's, it, it's been excavated twice and they've, they've reburied it. Um, but, I, you know, if, if you sort of want to, you know, I don't, I don't know how this process works, but if you can sort of throw, there's got to be, I mean, just a slew of archaeological evidence surrounding that whole area. If, if uh, around the around the proposed freeway, there was a new site uncovered. There, um, there was also a, a large village there, and uh, because it's still in discovery stage, I can't, you know, speak specifically to it. But there was also ball fields and even. Um, uh, uh, a home of a traditional medicine person there and um, you know uh, so it's it's in the general area of where where the site is yeah it's, it's, it's destroying um, American history to I mean that you know indigenous history uh, is is and if you, you know Maybe contacting a bunch of like archaeological groups and and and, I, and again I don't know like tr what tribes would want you know um, to be to be dug up and, and stuff but if the alternative is is a freeway just smashing through that stuff or some archaeolog archaeologists like kind of dicking around in there like you know well, that's a point that um, you're bringing it up that's within the community you know I was hearing it hours ago. That's a concern, you know, because there is like this, everywhere in this city, this region, you know, 
know, even where I'm from, you know, this is all this development, you just dig so, you know, depending where we're at, you, or who will come, you know, that's how we say it. Not, I mean, that's how it's been changed, but, you know, how you know. But um, it's, that's a concern. And every year, you know, I, I don't like to share this a lot, you know, with outside people, but, you know, that's something that we have to take care of due to that. So that's something, an element that's been brought up by the community, you know, saying like, well, we're going to, we're going to disturb that, you know, disturb them. So like, I mean, at the very, you know, as far as an outside perspective, I guess, like for what's going on, it would, it would probably be good to be like, well, you know, you shouldn't mess with something, you know, with people that are, or that's, that's where they're resting. And, you know? and, it, and consecutively, uh, we do have two tribal members that are in the archeology span program uh, for Gila River. And I used to work for our archeology span department and um, um, they're advising us, even though they can't outlook because they were colonized, but they still have that inner, you know, obligation to, to voice their concern. And um, when they do assessments, they only uh, dig ha uh, about a foot down. And if they don't find anything, then, then they dub it, you know, uh, not significant. But you don't know if, you know, there's something farther down and then you uncover it when you do development like Or you this. blow it up. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's also something to be said too though for the psychology of the city planners and um, civ you know, the civil planners. <clears throat> for example, the light rail, I mean, they, they there's the, um, I can't remember the exact name of the act, but there's the, there's an act that essentially says that any of the city planners has to have a, they'll hire a firm or someone that'll assess the area. What is it? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think so. American, great pension, yeah. Like even just the 143, which is right, the uh, 143 freeway, when they did the first run on that and they, they you know, started digging, which is right by the, this is called Pueblo Grand over here in, um, Southeast or East Phoenix, um, there were over 800 remains that were excavated during that, and these people had the gall to name the freeway Ho Ho Com Express. <sighs> like, but yeah, this thing has some perspective. Can you translation. Ho Com translates to the ancient ones, which is our original tribe, and we're descendants of that tribe. There was three original tribes in okay. this general region. Thank you. Yeah, with NAGPRA, um, can we, Eric can help me out. It's for AI, AIS says, <laughs> no, uh, American Indian Studies. Repatriation Act. Yeah. Yes. Like, it's something that is where, you know, when I talk to non native people in this town, like, or any development, like, there's protocol that the, the state supposedly now follows to now give our remains, if it's pottery, if it's actual uh, ones that have gone and arrested. That they have to give it back to the tribe because there's a brutal history of this hundreds of years of this non-native people you know taking our remains you know not just you know across the country you know you go to the Smithsonian Museum there's whole archives of like you know the old library card you know when you pull the little shelf out of skulls and bones and everything you can think and the tribes are still fighting for it to this day and we have to prove to them that it's our you know, their ancestors so here in my opinion being that we're have had the, the history of the past in other areas, the East Coast has seen this you know, destruction for, for fucking 500 years. Like, this is very new here. You know, like this desert has protected us from all these outside people. And now since we have to deal with all this development and these corridors and, you know, pretty much making this look like Cali or across the country in the East, East Coast, like they're digging up our people. So there's protocol they, they have made, which is NACRA, which is, is a law without meat, you know, as a professor told me that we can use these laws, but we still have to like argue, but you know, to get it back. And even then, like, why are we even doing this? And the way I understand it, you know, that's why we have this imbalance, you know, that's going on in our communities. Cause our, the, the, the ones who have gone have come back up, you know, and so we need to leave them alone to begin with, you know, hence no freeway. So the whole point with what I'm saying is that like, all this stuff that, you, these freeways and all this development, like it's so much bullshit red tape that they have to do which is to work angles, and I hate to word it this way, but that's money these people spend. Just leave us alone, you know, simple as that. And 
and, and on that level, and of course, more importantly, like that's just part of who I am. Lori and Kevin and <coughs> Leonard here, you know, we're all awesome. Those are, it's just like you're, you're fucking with our, our, our relatives who are gone, pretty yeah. much. And let me say that NACRA, it, it has too many holes, it has too many gaps. It's supposed to be there for our protection of repatriation of these remains and funerary objects. But yet, it took years for our tribe to go to the Smithsonian to retrieve, uh, you know, what they saw as actually ours. And when he got there, and, and, and this is the respect we show for our, our, our ancestors. When he got there, he found that they were just in cardboard boxes, ready to go. Uh, some of them were uh, beer, beer boxes, beer cartons, and they were given to him that way. And he had plane tickets for each of those remains, those sets, so that they could travel in the plane and not in the cargo section. And that, and that was all worked out and everything. But that's the disrespect that uh, that that this this country shows our own people, our, the native people, the original people, the original ones. And so Nagpra is still has a lot of things that it not, doesn't address. And, and, and it's supposed to be a durable law for protection of the indigenous people, but it doesn't protect us one bit. It just gets bought up, just like the word sovereignty. We're supposed to be a sovereign nation, but people use that at their convenience, the sovereignty. So, um, I, and, and if you guys uh, will allow me some time to go into a little bit of background on my work and what I've been doing in my community, um, again, my name is Lori Riddle. I'm Akumar Otham. Um, um, uh, my lineage goes back. I have uh, deep roots in my community. I know a lot of my history. I know my language. Um, I, um, I got involved because my family and I, we were allowed to move on our own personal allotment land and it was contaminated with pesticides. Uh, they, that goes back as far back as the 1920s at least. It could go back farther than that. So uh, we were exposed to chemicals such as uh, the same kind of chemicals you'll find in Agent Orange. Uh, the toxaphene, DDT, and DDE were really pre prevalent in that area. And, um, I, you know, if you guys want to know about that experience, come to me later, but I want to continue on to this freeway issue. Okay, when we were living in the super fun site, this was uh, 77 on, it was in the early mid 80s, it was when they first proposed this freeway. And I'm holding, this is 1987, and this was, um, environmental assessment report their draft at the time and in here this is where our governor then donald lantham states that uh, the community didn't want a freeway as far back as as them uh, this was in 86 this letter was drafted and so um they have been imposing this freeway on us for decades and uh with the exposure that my family dealt with, I, I became um, I became interested in studying on my own about chemicals and their and and their um, effects on humans because I saw a lot of miscarriages in my family. I saw a lot of breathing problems. I saw a lot of general problems with bone marrow and stuff like that. And so. Um, learning all that, learning about my enemy, and getting information from EPA on what kind of emissions vehicles uh, typically uh, put out. Uh, five, five concerning uh, uh, substances would be dioxin, which is the number one cancer-causing carcinogen, according to the EPA. Uh, um, uh, nitrogen oxides, Particulate matter 10, uh, the, thank you, my mind, my memory's bad. Um, hydrocarbons, uh, 
uh, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxide, particulate matter, and dioxin. Now, just the tip of the iceberg, uh, these main things will cause cancer, asthma, emphysema, heart attacks, and strokes. Because when the particulate matter goes down into your lungs, because you're breathing it without realizing it, it's in the air, when it goes deep down into your lungs, it causes heart attacks and strokes. So we did get some pictures currently on New Year's Day of the pollution that we see currently. Now, these experts are claiming that with uh, volume, average volume, we may see up to nine times more pollution in the area. And with the way that the mountain is laid out, and this is not a very good picture, but um, Estrella Mountain lays this way, I mean, uh, South Mountain lays this way in this direction, and Estrella Mountain lays this way. So they're almost parallel to each other. Jez went with me to go take photographs one day and do some video about the general area. And there's no denying that the terrain in this, this part of the uh, valley is so that it creates a, 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 um, almost like a bowl effect. So when you're talking about pollution and emissions and everything, there's nowhere for the pollution to go. I mean, it'll come out of the sides what little can, but the, the most of it is just going to linger. And I keep arguing the fact that Phoenix is flatter land base. It's got more areas to kind of go out into. But with that area, it, and there's people living there. Our people are living in there. There's villages there. I, I partially grew up in that area. And the health effects uh, more than outweigh <laughs> what we're going to get in development. And firms like this company, Pangea, <laughs> oh my god, they're going around the reservation uh, giving people $50 for their signature to agree to manage their, their tribal allotments. And so basically they're asking for permission to do whatever development or anything, future plans for their land for 50 bucks. This is a company that's in Tempe that does this. They're, they, they're from outside the community. And they're, so, and they're so shady that um, one incident, a complaint was brought against them recently in the, uh, in the district level. They came to a woman who was diagnosed with dementia while she was alone and no, no family members were there. They got her signature and um, I, I just say that's fraud. Uh, they're defrauding our community members because she's not in her right mind. Uh, her family makes her decisions for her and it, it's not right. I mean, it, it, it's back to spell, selling the land for beans again. We're getting peanuts. That's what an elder said today earlier. Because we're getting peanuts for this land. Uh, Arizona, uh, CentralArizona.com uh, did a a recent, um, a recent poll or informal poll, very informal, uh, uh, whether or not um, people who are for or against the freeway. And a lot of the Merdegan was basically saying, oh, that, that, have you guys seen that area, that land is barren, there's nothing there. And I basically responded to the woman, so barren land is yours for the taking? You know, just because we're not using it, you can just come and pull it out from underneath us and develop on it? I mean, that's not right. And we're just trying to protect our way of life. We're trying to protect our people. Uh, I, I try and talk to everybody and anybody I can to prevent this from happening, what's going on with my family and our health effects. Um, you know, it's outrageous what my family has gone through and nothing was ever done. Our community was led to believe that we got a million dollar settlement. No, we got 
build, they attempted to build my grandfather for a million plus dollars for the cleanup. In 1984, when the EPA came to do the cleanup, they tried to take my grandfather to federal court to, to get, get him to pay for the cleanup. My grandfather's a poor man. He lives off the land. You know, he was retired by this point, and he didn't have the money for it. And they finally did determine that he wasn't at fault. He wasn't the responsible party. But it was humiliating for him to see, as a, as a little girl, 12 years old, seeing my grandfather come home. And I've never seen my grandfather angry. Never. He's always soft words and soft spoken but firm and seeing him just that humiliated that he was blowing steam as he came through the door that's not our way you know but now I feel like we have to take a stand we have to speak up as indigenous communities to protect ourselves in Salt River they put a freeway the 101 freeway they're starting to see health effects from it uh, you know, typical health effects, and all this stuff is persistent organic pollutants. It's bioaccumulation. You know, I, I, this stuff is dangerous. We, we felt like guinea pigs when the, they kept telling us back in the 80s, we don't know what this is going to do to your health. We don't know if it's going to affect your health or, you know, anything like that. Some of those chemicals were nerve damagers and we're feeling the effects now and and it nothing has ever been done it will, our issue got swept under the rug and at least now I can fight this freeway I have a breath in me to fight this freeway my family can fight for it and once we do what we're gonna do with the boat in Gila River then I've always said that's when the uh, uh, supporters are going to come in, the other tribes from the state are going to come in, and they're going to help us. I have that faith. You know why? Because um, I didn't mention that um, I'm a co-founder of Gila River Alliance for a Clean Environment. We call it GRACE. And since the early 2000s, when I first met Kevin and Alex, we've been fighting polluters in Gila River. Um, for that long and our first victory we had was a medical incinerator that was emitting dioxin and they lied to our community and we knocked them out and they dismantled within a year uh, the next uh, big fight took eight years and that was against Romic environmental technology whatever they call themselves and I have too many health problems right now and I'm just fighting to stay alive and I'm just fighting to fight, you know? And I, I recently said, I, I'm going down fighting. Nobody is gonna knock me down. So, you know, with that, I mean, feel free to share with me or or to get with me any anytime and, you know, learn more about us and, uh, I, I know the guys have probably some other important points that they remember while I was talking that they can hit on, so I'm going to turn it over back to them. Uh, I think Drew he was mentioning some uh, discussion, if that was cool with y'all, but one thing I do want to know is that you know, when I when I met Lori, you know, um, in the 2000s or so around Romic, and uh, that's how I, where I met Drew and Matt and some other, you know, folks that have probably been down here, and as, you know, I'm Awesome. like we're you know who's middle god you know i didn't know who, like what was going on he's anarchist or you know whatever you want know, to call you know identify and the thing is you know through that time they, they've been there to support you know they had that solidarity you know which could look like you know doing something like this trying to let people know like i remember like passing the hat you know for ramic you know to get some funds you know things small things you know that add up and at the very least let y'all know what's going on so y'all can figure out something and to a point, I remember we did a protest around Romic. This guy was the first one that challenged Hill River cops, you know, that were trying to uh, arrest this guy, you know, when he was trying to go to the, the gate of the company, you know, to deliver a message, you know, tell him what's up. And he had, you know, he was going to sing a, a traditional song. So, like, there's a lot of work to be done as far as, you know, the, 
decolonization and you know all these academic phrases and all that but like the fact that y'all are here and hopefully we'll be there wednesday and the following week at the other meeting with adot like that goes a long way you know and of course i you know people are at places you know where their politics or you know their, their views and just how they feel to be part of something like this but like just show up you know and through that time like i mean dear god i took this guy to mexico to see a traditional autumn on the other side to find a, a center a waste site out there you know so like just that solidarity goes a long way, and it's crazy. It always trips me out to see him and elders that I, you know, we all mutually know. Hey, Drew's here, you know, or Matt or Jez or just other people. You know, that's the that's the community. You know, and regardless of our, you know, we all have differences. We all, we're all who we are. You know, our cultures. You know, and especially with Native people, there's a lot of fucked up history with outside people. But you know, being an I am person, mixed race, Mexican, and all of them. You know, I I I live in both worlds. You know, we all do. But I, you know, I see that you know a lot of people want to help, and just having this space in y'all's y'all's time goes a long way. To it, just, it means a lot, not just to me, but you know, the Lord and everybody doing what we're doing. And either way, we're going to stop this damn freeway. But I mean, we can stop it a lot faster, and we can shut it down, you know, compared to slowing it down. So I don't know if you want to say. <laughs> nah. Um. Hi. Hello. My name. Is, well, for the ones that do know me, but for the other people that don't know me, um. Uh, my name is uh, Kevin Jose. I'm part of uh, Optimus Solidarity Cross Borders Collective. Um, everything that was, you know, said here today or like into the night or, um, is very true. You know, but the things that are happening right now, it's accelerating to the point where, uh, like, with this freeway that's being that's been going to be purposely established, was one of the things that we pointed out was um, that this freeway. You know, what it also represents is. Uh, like a border wall because where we come from as often people like again you know like reminding everybody you know like again like where we come from the hoogum hoogum people are, or how I, I was raised to say it was the hoogie all of them meaning those who have gone or those who have passed on and you know our territory again it stretches all the way from here to from red mountain superstition mountains all the way down into uh the Sea of Cortez, uh, like Puerto Peñasco, Sonraita, then into Chihuahua, into Sierra Madre, uh, along with other, you know, indigenous people such as the Yaqui, the Apache people, the Kickapoo, uh, the Aramiri, the Taromara, the Sierra, and the Mayu. Um, one of the things, again, you know, is that when we talk about, you know, colonization, you know, again, you know, with capitalism, capitalism is as, you know, has many faces of its own death that it has its faces of creating death amongst communities especially communities that are poor communities that are suffering communities that are fighting against this and this is you know again you know what we're creating right now is a community it's a small community but it's a community that we're developing to where we want to make it healthy and that we appreciate you know not just only the support but yet at the same time too like appreciating the fact that you know that we're here to express you know not just only the details but yet at the same time to express and share with you of who we are as as a indigenous people here in this region um there's a lot of you know again like mahajan was saying alex you know he was saying like uh there's not too many things that we share because we have certain links to where we how far as we go is to what we express and what we ex we explain of this territory and since you know you know we're doing this you know like again you know we're sharing with you you know everything you know, that's that is happening um including with the meeting uh today and this afternoon it was really insane like to see you know our like our own people like who were there with the uh a group called the uh, pickles land share owners association land owner, land owner yeah and it's a group of people from a community in a district called Co-op, which is District 7, which is maybe like about like about nine minutes away from Tallis. All uh, that community there, basically along that corridor, you know, they're you know, what really upset me was the fact that they were really they're willing to sell, and give up their land, you know, all <laughs> in the name of capital to gain capital, you know, in their pockets, and and I. Like, we were talking about it a little bit today, you know, like, you know, me, Laurie, and Drew, you know, it was just that, 
you know, we've heard this story before. We've seen this happen, not just here, but, you know, everywhere else and all, all over the world and other indigenous communities that are fighting against, you know, the, you know, the capitalist state. And, you know, it's just that, you know, they say that, oh, we're, we're doing this to develop uh, sustainability and uh, develop a uh, healthy, steady economy, <laughs> you know, and, um, and it's like, well, how can you say that when you're just giving up a piece of land, when you're giving up your rights as being autumn and being pipash, um, being an indigenous person, you know, from heart, you know, how can you say that? And that was really upsetting to me, you know, to hear that, to hear these things that are being expressed. And, um, but again, you know, the points, you know, like where the points were made, you know, is that what this freeway is gonna cause and what it's gonna do, not, only as a cultural impact, you know, onto the people, but what it's going to do to us health-wise, uh, what it's going to do, and then what it's going to, how it's going to affect uh, women, children, you know, and men, elders, you know, way of, like animals, uh, plant life, everything, you know, contamination of water, and um, you know, so you know, together, what we're doing right now is, is like we're fighting against this. You know, then of course, you know, for me myself, you know, in my opinion, like, I'm not really for a vote. You know, I always said, have said, fuck the vote. <laughs> you know, but but this is what the community is doing. You know, so they you know vote. You know, like for a for a no build option, like vote no build. And um, but you know, one of the things is like I do what I can. You know, like, as an individual myself, as an awful person, you know, I do what I can. You know, to be uh, to keep an open mind about things, you know, keep an open mind about, you know, again, you know, a lot of our views are different, we're not going to agree with each other, but yet at the same time, what we can do is be on the exact level of solidarity, and that uh, we have solidarity from these communities here, especially in the city area, you know, so, um, but yeah, like, but also to what Jez was saying, you know, definitely Wednesday, you know, definitely come out, you know, reclaim, you know, reclaim space, you know, letting uh, the people in Ada and Mag know that it's like no, fuck this, you know, no freeway, like no compromise. So it'll be really cool, you know. So hopefully this, you know, definitely you're able to come out, you know. So uh, I don't know if there's anything else to share. Like, there was something you kind of touched on, and we want to open this up at, right now. I'm, I'm going to say this, and then I think we want to open this up to some discussion, or if there's any more questions. But one of the things we did, I heard you say, and I, I know. What you're talking about, because I've heard you say before, but in the way that the freeways act as border walls, essentially, which has kind of a, du a dual meaning, because Tohono O'odham people in southern Arizona, their land, their community, not only is it colonized by two different countries, Mexico and the United States, but their land is literally divided by a physical border wall. Simultaneously, I can think of when I grew up here, and you know, you knew about the reservation, but you were never taught in school even the bullshit colonial names, Papago, Pima. And when Kevin's talking about how these things function as border walls, like imagine what the kids growing up here now are going to know about that. It's a freeway wall. And then what's beyond it? A cotton field that they know nothing about. They don't know the community. They don't, they don't understand where they are. And so in some ways, for people who just don't know any better, Pima, right, which is a, a colonial name, but it comes from an autumn word, Bimach, I don't know, which was essentially like the response to the colonialists. Autumn were like, Bimach, like, what the fuck is going on for you? Um, but it makes so much sense in that, in that <laughs> for essentially what is the colonial society, Phoenix, that they do drive on I don't know freeway. They go to I don't know community college, you know. They uh, uh, what's another good example of where you hear it? But there's a missile silo called Pima. What's that? There's a missile silo called Pima. I don't know what's gonna kill me in this pest. <laughs> Whatever. But um, but in, in that sense, it is appropriate. But that's also why you know one of the things that we do is we we you know it's important that people know where they are. That people know, you know. Who was here? Who is here? This is not like a, you know, I mean, I think in some ways they prefer to get the name of the of the people that, that were descended from right. Rather, you know about the ancient Hohokam. 
rather, I mean, they don't even pronounce it right, the Huagum. Why don't you know, rather, rather you know about the Hohokam, whose canals were here, but they're gone now, right? And so when they're gone and then the physical presence can be locked away behind a freeway wall, a massive <laughs> freeway wall, then the invisibilization process is nearer to complete. And that is a process of genocide. And, and so, and they were even calling us healers, as if Pima isn't isn't disrespectful enough. They were calling us healers, and so we're like, get it right. Central. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Harry it Mitchell. Harry Mitchell, yeah. So, you know, they don't know nothing about us. They don't want to know nothing about us. They, but they just rather take over our land, take over our, our, our peace. And, and when I went to National Congress of American Indians uh, a few years back, there was maps being circulated of the cessation of land, Indian land, whereas we own, uh, you know, real great portions of Indian land when Columbus first came and, you know, who, the first president and then down the line and then now we're just on little specks of reservation <coughs> and somebody today said that our reservation used to only extend up to baseline road that's not true because i have elders that tell me that they they uh adams and van buren this is where our boundary line used to be but because they don't want us to remember that they took all that land from us. They try to wipe it out of their minds, wipe it out of our minds, so we don't remember these things. Jez, that's all you. Um, <coughs> just to bring it back, someone was mentioning like, you know, do you know about these villages that are out there? There's, you know, 800 something <coughs> that are saying. Um, part of what the process of colonization does and it's kind of like the systemic abuse that, that oppresses any person is you have someone coming in and oppressing you and then invisibilizing your voice when you speak out against it <coughs> in that book that Lori's holding there's charts endless charts maps pages i scan that thing in they, have, they know how many villages, they know what the impacts are going to be, and it's taken us forever to get that, because that is like the facts of colonization. And I think another simple thing that people can do that are involved in Occupy, and I know I always say this, I feel like a broken record, I'm like, can you call it Deoccupy? Can you call it Unoccupy? We, but we are going to. Okay. It's already being worked on yet. Cool. I was going to talk to you guys about that after. Because one of the things like with Wall Street, where this came from, that, that's a literal wall that was built by colonizers and employing slaves to protect the white people from non-whites and to protect their riches. So I am glad that that is happening. And I think that's like bringing, bringing up these facts and sharing that like when you do change that name, share it with other people when they ask, oh, why did you change that? And, you know, bring everything in full circle because the more we uncover and the more we advocate and the more we help <coughs> lift everyone up, the better and the healthier we're going to be and the healthier our communities will be. And that's, like, what we want, you know. We don't want people to be oppressed anywhere. We want everyone to be liberated. We want to do it together safely, respecting everyone's boundaries. So. Yeah, let's come out Wednesday and every time, you know, just make it happen. <laughs> thanks for coming. I don't think it's ending, but I didn't want to say thanks. Um, you can email us too, um, the like non autumn people that are working on this directly. We have an email, it's no south mountain freeway at gmail.com. And again, our blog for that is no south mountain freeway.wordpress.com. What you guys haven't even realized, we're at Great Depression levels. So what they're going to do is, like, like Drew said, it is a part of capitalism. And that's the way they're going to do it. And what you don't understand, and what a lot of people don't understand, it's not just the route that gets affected. Travel experts say that urban sprawl and the creation of freeways 
right now you spend about 20 to 25 minutes in traffic. <laughs> With freeways, more freeways, your commute is gonna double in time. You're gonna sit in traffic from 42 to 45 minutes. And what happens when you're sitting in traffic for 40, 42, 42 to 45 minutes? You're doubling the increase in your emissions. Okay, you guys might not know this. I'm a, I'm a native of Arizona. I've lived here, I was born, actually I was born in Mexico, but I live here. Okay. We used to have four seasons. Now we have two. And how did that happen? We have a concrete island. We have two million people in a system that could really only sustain at the most 500,000. We can't leave. You guys can't leave. I understand that. But what we have to do is work together so that it's equitable for all of us. Now, these guys are doing an awesome job. I mean, <laughs> they're fighting for what they believe in, you know, and I'm grateful for them, you know, and I try to help as much as I can. <clears throat> by you helping them and by you helping them organize, not only are you helping them, you're helping yourselves. Because you know what? They test on Native Americans. They've done it from the beginning of time. That's why Alaskan Natives were given mercury to see what the effects of mercury would be on a human body. Yes, the government did that. You can Google, do what you have to do. Okay? <laughs> they want to see what they can get away with on us before they get to you. That's why you guys, that's why the situation is where it is now. That's why there has been a disproportionate distribution of wealth. Because they see and they, they want to know if we let, it, if they let this go by, eventually we're going to get to you guys. That's all I want to say.